Hello and welcome to this Project in a Box a video tour. In this session we're going to be having a look at the new features of version 4.4, in particular focusing on part uh, 2, which is Project Interdependencies. OK, so your Project Interdependencies are um, at work uh, throughout the system, uh, whether you're in the Windows application or the browser application, but they will only uh, can only be set up uh, and are best viewed, I guess, from the Windows application. So I have a uh, program here, a collection of projects within a portfolio, which are all interrelated in some way. Um, so I'm going to go and open one of these projects up, and we can see straight away how uh, the interdependencies uh, look to uh, to the program team. Uh, so I'm going to select my project controls, portfolio, tasks and bring up that window. I'm just going to maximize it so we can see what's going on here a little bit better. So we can see one of these projects here You know, is a traditional sort of project. It's running through with some dependencies in it. Uh, we've got some other projects here and we can see in these other projects dependencies flow from one project to another. Um, tasks in this project start after the completion of the milestone from the prior project and we can have a number of those different relationships there's a few uh, ones here so some of these projects down the end can only start when several other projects are complete already and there might be some lags and things in there so these dependencies obviously flow across multiple projects they're not project to project they're between a task in one project and a task in the second project so we can see them on here uh, and they this will you know when you're running a view on your Gantt chart display here um, which is uh, showing dependencies because they can be switched off then um, they will show through here where they are active um, and obviously we're using a view which is showing us all the tasks in this particular project uh, uh, sorry program um, so those are all nicely visible there um, now each plan is managed as a separate item so as it always has been. The project uh, has the plan as a file in it um, and the project team might check it out and check it back in again uh, and that might trigger then uh, following on actions if there are dependencies to other following plans. Um, so the project team sees the plan in entirely the same way as it normally has done, always has done. Um, the dependencies are managed by a higher permissioned user and administrator or that can be a delegated permission to other people. And there's some special forms for doing that. Um, if you're uh, in your normal project controls area, you can just do plan dependencies for the current project. Or, or you can go to admin and do manage plan dependencies. This allows you to do not only dependencies for this project to set them up, but also to see the more complete set of them across multiple projects. So we'll use that form uh, here. So this is in two parts. Like I say, the first part is the same as the simple um, uh, create dependencies form, and you see the dependencies for the current project, um, and they're ones uh, that apply to this project. So there is one that applies to this project, but it's currently suspended. It's not actually active. Um, now, if we go on to the more interesting plan dependency chain here, and I just refresh that, you'll see what we've got is... Um, a set of dependencies, some active, some suspended, between uh, a set of projects. And as we click on each one, we can see some information about the, uh, the, the, the task in the particular plan which has been triggered and what it's been triggered by the predecessor project, the one that feeds into it. On which task it is from that. Some of most of these have no lags, or some of them have no lags. Some of them do have lags. This one here has a very long lag, which is switched off. So we can see uh, that flowing through the system here. Now you can add as many of these as you want, and these are all added from either the project or using this form here. Um, and the system builds up a set of them. It then tries to work out what is a sensible uh, flow through those, what is a sensible waterfall or path down through those particular dependencies. Um, and it's worked out what we call the chain. And so this is the chain here. And as we click on a particular plan, we'll see what the chain is that flows on from that plan. Now, it's doing that using some algorithms. It may not always be right because sometimes um, it's going to look for earliest start dates, for example, uh, and hope and, and suspect that other plans with a, a 
with a later start date should follow after that one. Now if you're making a gross change by moving a project a long way you may find that that falls um, out of uh, sync a little bit and you can therefore move the projects up and down in the order here, demote or promote them um, to help set that up you know, in a better way. Um, so it's got this plan and list and then the chain of things that flow down from it. Some of them of course will have very little um, down the bottom and others will have quite a lot. Um, so if you were to change this plan, if we were to check it out and change it, it would have an effect all the way down through these other projects here. Now, um, so if we check out that plan, make a change to it, check it back in, it would automatically then say, oh I now need to do this next one uh, and it will then check that file out and check it back in again with the updated changes, uh, building in that extra dependency change that's happened. Now, even if we check out our first plan and there are no changes to it and we check it back in, it is still going to go and check out the other ones. Um, there's very good reason for that, which is that you know we, there may be other changes happening in f plans further down and we don't necessarily know um, what the previous version of the plan said in terms of dates. So just to be sure, every time you check this plan in, it will trigger the cascading uh, chain of checkouts. So it's very important to know that the plans are actually present and checked in. You know, if people leave their plans checked out, and we can see here that this plan is checked out to me, then when I check out and update the first one, then it comes down to the second one, it says, oh, I can't check it out because it's already checked out. And it will give you a message and then stop at that point in the process. And in fact, we can force it to do those things from here. So if I were to um, uh, edit this item, edit this rule, and say let's put a 30-day lag into there, um, and I now want to update that. Now if I just update this plan, it will check out, make the changes, check it back in again. But what I really want to do is update the chain of plans. So here we are, update dependent plan. So it's going to take this one and work through the chain. And we're going to see straight away the message that we get when it gets to this next one. It says, actually, we can't work on that because it's currently checked out. And you would get that message whenever you checked out now and checked back in the CRM replacement plan um, because of that knock on effect as it works its way down through the dependency chain. Um, in fact, any user checking out and checking back in again the CRM replacement plan would get that message and so these may start to pop up from time to time it's indicating to you that there is a problem um, uh, with that chain uh, because somebody's got something checked out and you can simply solve that by coming to here seeing which plan it is who's got it checked out going and sorting that out getting it checked back in again and then you'll be able to progress through the chain properly so we're just going to do that and just nip off to the that particular project uh, this one, we go and find its plan here. Uh, here we are. I'm just going to undo the checkout, and um, we can then go back. In fact, of course, because we're still in the same portfolio, we can just go back to our portfolio tasks view like that and we'll be able to see uh, our corporate services plan. Now, if I want to go back, I could, I could of course, now check this one out and progress through the chain. Um, but if I go back to my admin manage plan dependencies chain, I can now see I've got nothing in the way of that. So if I come to here and update dependent plans, see down here, it's rolling down through the various plans that it needs to and updating all of those for me dependent you know based on the first one we've set up if I now come back and refresh this we can see we've had this one move along a little bit and we moved everything else accordingly so um, nice and easy to do actually fairly easy to set up you just need to think about what it is that you're doing um, and then the implications of that as it works through. Now these dependencies are going to be visible in your reports. They're obviously um, interacting between the various plans um, and will be really useful for people setting up
programs where, like I say, projects interact with each other. When we're setting these up though, it's important that when we're driving a task in a plan, um, that task isn't itself um, uh, dependency based within its own project plan. So um, we're driving here this particular task uh, from another project. Um, if that task was also dependent on other tasks within the project, that may cause some issues as it's calculated. Really, we should be we should only be driving tasks which normally have a date set, rather for the start, rather than a dependency based start. So then we only have one dependency to that task. It's the one coming in from the other project, rather than the one you know, rather than multiple different dependencies, and it has to work out which one is the best one. So, uh, so those are a couple of simple rules. Um, only have dependencies to tasks um, which are not dependent on something in their own plan um, and that's often therefore people using the first task in the project you know they have a milestone for project start and that's what they're driving from some other tasks in other projects obviously circular references would cause you a problem um, so it, it isn't advised to drive this one from here and then one of these from here because that doesn't really just doesn't make any sense and um, there has to be a bit of user sense in terms of how we create these things and in fact the system will uh, will let you know if you are creating something that's a bit odd like that okay so hopefully you found that uh, useful um, and uh, please do watch on for the third uh, video tour which is looking at the other new additions to uh, version 4.4 thank you very much